Mission report, 19th of March, 2021. Oh, it's been a while since we did one of these. <laughs> yeah. A week off. And... It feels weird. Like, even know, last week yeah. when we didn't do it, I was like, God, my week feels so weird. Friday felt weird. Saturday felt weird. And then no editing. So I was like, what am I doing my life? I don't know. It felt <laughs> weird. <laughs> anyway, jumping straight into this. Um, so we're in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier now. A completely yeah. different story compared to WandaVision. So, of course, as we usually do, what did you boys think of the first episode? Oh, I thought I thought it was I really liked it. I I agree with something something like um what do you call it? I think I agree with um something that I think someone I saw someone say like talking about a review of it. They said there's the pace was the pace was not what they're expecting. Mm. And I do think it was like it was I agree with that. It's very like it was a long episode and I think at times it could it felt maybe slightly too fast paced and but then we had heaps of moments of like just slowing right down mm. so I think that worked that worked really well that there's some moments was like could have been a little bit too fast possibly but it works because we do have the slow moments to just sort of catch our breath you know mm. but um but yeah no I really I really liked it and I liked that we got to see um we, I wasn't expecting with yeah in the first episode Bucky and Sam don't even to catch up yet in the first episode that doesn't even happen yet um but we get to see separately their sort of their characters getting explored more so i do i really like that I, it's one of those things of like yeah talking about the pace it's like when we got to like about sort of like the start of the the press conference about john walker it's sort of like it was about that point i was thinking and oh, wow like we're only halfway through the episode or something <laughs> at this point and then the credits roll and i thought wow that went fast <laughs> it's like yeah it's like it's one of those things of like um um when you talk about like sort of slow pace it's sort mm. of um it's like it's sort of like it, it's um it's like a, a slow pace story will always go go by faster than a fast paced one is what i always feel is like mm. the sort of thing and that's mm. kind of like something that's definitely here is like this felt like um this felt like if it was a movie it's like I feel like this whole everything that happened within this episode would have this would have been like the end of the first half hour of mm. it. Like it's sort of it has that same that sort of feel of like like a film just extended out and like sort of just spending just all of this like extra sort of quiet moments in between all the action in between all the big events and it's just like I I think it was um it's got a really, really good feel of like from that side of things of like sort of like i reckon this is going to be probably more so than one division it'll feel like sort of like after it's all released as the one thing like sort of feel much more like a kind of mini series sort of mm. approach of like this being a show to binge watch later on mm. of um but like um um yeah i, I was um because I knew, I knew you were expecting, like, sort of some degree of characterization. I wasn't expecting we'd go, like, sort of that deep into it being, like, sort of so mm. much of, like, just primarily a sort of character story about these characters. And it's sort of, I feel like this is kind of, this is an example of where Falcon Winter Soldier as a show is able to work so well compared to if it was a film, for instance, is that I reckon if it was a film, the pace and the, like, sort of balance of action and character would be, like, basically the same as in Winter Soldier or Civil War. Those are still very good films for, like, sort of in terms of character development and, like, sort of focus on, on character, but there's only so much you can do in that amount of time when you're having that many action set pieces and you're moving along at that kind of pace. But then in this, it's sort of, like, it really does have the feel of, like, if they took like a sort of like the script for a two and a half hour film and just thought let's just like yeah you know, let's just like spend all this extra downtime between the different like sort of sequences focus mm. more on the characters focus more on the storytelling and the emotion and like just let it what's the word um give it space to breathe you know in amongst all of the mm. all the everything else and i f i feel like that's sort of Seems like that's something that will continue through the rest of the series of like they'll we'll get those little, all those little moments to breathe, all those little focuses like back on like the grounded side of things and like the sort of the, the people behind the costumes and the you know, the pomp and ceremony of it all, mm. and mm. like yeah, I really really yeah. like it so far. Yeah, I have to agree as well. Like I was also surprised by how deep we went into the character characterizations of both these characters already, especially with like 
Sam. Like, Sam, like, unfortunately, we didn't get a lot of him. Like, we just knew that he was obviously, like, in the Air Force and stuff. We didn't know a lot about his backstory. Bucky, we did, because obviously we met him in Captain America, mm. and then we knew stuff about him in Winter Soldier, etc. But to know that, like, Sam had a sister, and he has, like, nephews, and then, like, you know, he left home at a young age and joined the Air Force, so he doesn't know what's been going on, and just... I loved all that. That was like so nice to sort of just, it was sort of like an episode where you get to know the characters, like just be reintroduced mm. to them. Um, so that's why I thoroughly enjoyed all that. And just, I loved the pace of it all. And also I have to give a big round of applause for cinematography because I got to like the mm. halfway mark and I was like, Jesus Christ, this is so good. <laughs> like, especially when you're in the, especially with the counseling session, just like those yeah. really close up shots. Like they're so like, I don't know, it felt for me like very invasive, but it was so mm. like cool to get all that emotion from, especially Bucky, you can see he's getting uncomfortable and stuff. And just like the ca- the therapist is sort of just like, you know, grilling him for answers. And I just absolutely loved it. And yeah, I can't wait to see more of PJ that. PJ Dillon of- is the cinematographer. Oh, nice. I just, yeah, I just, already. Um, yeah, PJ already. Dillon. He's done such a yeah. good job. It's like, and even just like from the trailers, just from some of the, all like the stuff, I'm really, really looking forward to when they get a Madripoor later on like that yes. just looks like absolutely that's gonna be cool with like the visuals there not to say the rest of the show isn't mm. but it's like it's just mm. like i'm just a sucker for ne- for neon lighting i think i'm i'm thinking of this way more in terms of like as if it's a film in multiple mm. parts more than just like a series it's like um with something like one division it's like that really was more of a sort of series in its approach mm. it's like when you like you think about like how like it's sort of like we had like the formula of what the show was sort of going to be like established off the bat and i think that's sort of like the big difference between like a mini series and a show in like my mind my perspective is that there is no establishment of the formula of what the majority of it is going to be because instead it's more like in a film where like the first act is like at the end of the first act is when you establish the formula of what most of the film is going to be like up through like through the third act and we're not out of the first act yet Mm. in this i feel like that'll end around like the middle of next week's episode or Mm. something that'll be the point when bucky and sam have met up again they've sort of made the decision of like okay we're gonna go out and do something to like sort of investigate what's going on here and everything and i feel like it's just i i just really like that sort of like getting into that more sort of serialized storytelling approach of like the fact that yeah we don't we don't need to have them meet up in the first episode let's just Mm. yeah have each of them separate focus on each of their lives and like establish all this sort of spend the whole episode with each of them exploring their characterization explore exploring their living situation at the moment exploring Mm. what's going on for them um in you know this sort of post blip era and everything and like i just i i I, I saw there were, um there was the one thing lots of people have been saying that I definitely agree with, especially after I mean Mitch been watching a, um, a lot of it recently is like it feels more this feels almost like more like one of the Marvel Netflix shows than mm-hmm. anything else. Or, like yeah, it has that same sort of vibe yeah. of like something in line with mm-hmm. Daredevil and Jessica Jones mm-hmm. and so on. It's also I guess a good reason for me and Mitch to get hyped with like all of our theories about them being brought into the MCU <laughs> at some point. It's like it's oh, like oh, it's got that sort of feel. It's like, <laughs> I was gonna say the way I'm looking at it in terms of like when you would expect sort of stuff from the different shows to turn up is the fact that um it's the one thing that aside from like any of the sort of like okay, all of those shows are finished, we don't have to worry about like interrupting the story of them and interrupting like sort of season plots and that sort of thing, and that was that's what was stopping that was the main reason why um, uh, the Russos decided against having the Defenders Mm. in Infinity War, which they had planned to. That was a plan. Yeah. yeah. Matt, Jess, Luke, Iron Fist are going to just turn up. Yeah. And so, um, but it's the big thing as well of like, because Netflix had their distribution rights still Mm. to the characters up until I think it was Daredevil and a bunch of the others, the rights reverted in the start of December last yeah, um, last and year. Recently, and Punisher Jess and, and Pun- yeah. yeah, Jess and Punisher, their rights reverted mm. last month. Mm. And so I would say it's like well, worth noting that 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 start of December was also around the same time they started filming Spider Man. And it's worth noting that <laughs> I think it's next month is when they start filming She Hulk, which Jess is mm. rumored to be in. And so I think it's 
I'm looking out from that sort of thing of like, yeah, if they do turn up in anything, it won't be until it's like, it won't be until like, say next year or mm. the end of this year of like any of yeah. the things that were shot after. Cause like, I don't know the yeah. whole deal of like how it's supposed to work legally, yeah. but I'd imagine like they won't, they wouldn't be able to shoot anything until after they have the rights mm. there yeah. of yeah. like, because of like, you know. Yeah, I think there is. Yeah, my internet ah. connection's not very Wait. good. But it's like... <laughs> yeah, very laggy. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> right, actually, let's just try it. Okay, because like, that was like, I, I didn't know to clap until after you got. So let's go. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> All He's... right, we should get back to we talking probably... about. Yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah. we should. We should. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of why we're here. I know. Um, I love how we have a spoken for a week, and this is what we do. I know. It's... <laughs> we got to catch up on stuff, you know. Got deep breath. <laughs> All right, um, that truck. I saw yeah. um yes! uh, Stephen Stephen Ford talking about like how great it is to have like we open this in like the same sort of way Winter Soldier opens with you know having Batrock be the villain at the start, having mm. like. I mean, it's like there's so many little nods to like to Winter Soldier of Sam like doing what Steve does here of like just like you know the getting the briefing and the plane jumping mm-hmm. out of the plane and so on, and then such a cool so I, back. I said the thing like I said if they if like in every other sort of like Captain America story they have it like open with Batroc has kidnapped someone on a different vessel <laughs> and he's and and then so Mitch he said yeah all right train next yeah, time train and then yeah. space shuttle after that and then probably be like some kind of interdimensional <laughs> vehicle oh <laughs> my god that'd like, be so cool <laughs> I, can we can we talk about the fact that thank god he survived I he's know. alive he's fine you know he's he fine. got away it's like oh thank god it's like i i really hope the the mcu does seem to i think it, it, i think it's starting to lose its trend of killing the villains mm. slowly just yeah. a I think bit. now they do like, want to sort of bring um, them back once in a while. Like the... And now yeah. they've got the series as well, like, so you've got more like... opportunity for that. You yeah, know, compared yeah. to in the films where most of the villains yeah, are one like... and done. But yeah, it's it's gets get, it can be really frustrating. If, like just stop killing the villains. Like they, they, you could do, you could tell yeah. some good stories of these guys. Especially you with know? like, I'll give one example that sort of made me annoyed. Hella. Yeah. yeah. I was so pissed. I was in the cinema and I was like, what? Like, yeah. why? Like. Oh, I was so upset. Yeah. And every time I watch it, I'm like, Yeah. Because yeah. Hella, I was kind of I was going into the film thinking she'll probably die. That's the way it goes. Mm. The Scourge was the one that really upset me. I thought, oh no. Yeah. Oh yeah. There was just yeah. alive, you know. He was he was turned mm. into a good guy at the end too, and then they, yeah. he yeah. just died, you know. It's uh-huh. like uh it's yeah, Thanos... he had to go do the boys. So yeah, like, that's, he that's, fair enough, boys, that's fair yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna that say was yeah. his revenge. I was gonna say, yeah, Thanos. Thanos is all good because he's like Kilgrave. It's like he kind of has to die. He's too oh, dangerous. Oh, he has to die. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how you would, what you do to, mm. to contain, yeah, you know, contain him. You oh, know, yeah. he's too dangerous. Mm. Um, and also it's good with Thanos because the the cost it it co- the cost of have killing him and winning was so high. You know, mm. that makes him more like a his major threat, and it, 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 it took everything they had to take him down. Yeah, and even just like um, his death, like has caused so much stuff to happen like even with the blip mm. how much it affected the world and even post everything going back to normal it still yeah. has had such a big effect yeah. as spoken in this episode like it's yeah. so in like like even like um i was about to say anthony sam was saying like you know like even though we're all back everything like and roadie roadie was saying Rody. who popped up i i <laughs> loved that roadie was i adored that roadie was just I know, there i was like, so happy i was like I, I I love just that that is the kind of shit that like honestly in seeing it in the big picture and everything now and everything it's like yeah that's sort of thing that wouldn't have worked too well with one division mm. but that's the shit I want from these series is where I'm just like Rhodey is here because why wouldn't he be here mm. you know it makes sense that Rhodey is here and I like that I love you know? it I love that they did that I, and I hope they keep doing that with this yeah series. exactly I, mm. I I I love stuff like that where because I said because it feels like comic then it feels like yeah, comic exactly, that this like character comic, just yeah. appears like. Um, you know, with everything with Punisher turning up in Daredevil, then me and Xander like, you're reading a Daredevil comic the other night, and there's a scene where Matt gets rescued by this unseen guy, and he's like, is it gonna be? Is it gonna be? And there's a shot of reveal, this guy standing over him in a black t-shirt with a skull symbol, and it's like, yeah, it's him! You know? It's like, <laughs> and I love stuff like that, where it's just like, you know, oh, this character is just here, because it makes sense them for them to be here, you know? It's the thing that always sort of would annoy me 
with whenever a character would turn up in something like Mando or something like that, and people being like, oh, it's just blatant fan service. It's like, if this was Marvel, you wouldn't complain about this. Oh, yeah. Because it's just people don't accept Remember the those, idea. All the way through season two, and like sort of people were saying the things of, um, it was like the the common line of, oh, this character is just here in this episode to set up their, to set up mm. a spin off show about them, and so on. Like, that's what they said about the episode of Ahsoka. That's what they said mm. about the episode of Bo. And that's the thing I remember, like, it was sort of because we'd just been watching season one back. And I thought, mm. season one, nobody was saying, like, yeah, episode episode four, oh, this episode is just blatant fan service to set up the Cara Dune show, you know, oh, this episode is just yeah. blatant fan service to set up the the um yeah. um the the mayfield show you know yeah. Yeah. it's like yeah. it's like that that's kind of that's what that's what the show is like in mando it's like it's yeah. this, it's a show where every other episode is like okay this character comes along and there's like a main character thing it's just that all of those characters were new characters and didn't have an mm. established fan base that yeah. people assumed they were servicing yeah. and it's sort of like what you, you know? said mitch as well yeah. it's like it makes yeah. sense with talking about mando and even marvel like yeah. it makes sense for those characters to be there because that's you know they're alive first of all yeah. and also that's like either their job or it's like they just happen to be the time and place they happen yeah, to exactly. be there for a reason like Let's that sort of thing is everyone sort of saying a lot of the characters turn up in Mandarin thing and just the styles of these characters are oh, just blatant fans sort of things. Like it's just it's because people just sort of aren't as a, as used to the idea of Star Wars being an integrated universe mm. the same way that Marvel and DC are, and that's yeah. the way that Star Wars has gone, and it's that same sort of thing. That's the like, way that Star Wars has been for decades yeah, in yeah. books, video games, exactly. and comics. You know. It's just that they're doubling down on it in new continuity and trying mm. to make it more of a. a forefront like sort of thing thread, but yeah. people are sort of not not mm. used to that idea yet i idea yet like vader in rogue one and the hallway stand if it's like that makes sense because while well, he's hunting leia and the plans at the start of new hope so of course he'll be here at the beginning of all of this happening mm. it makes sense for him, him to be involved in these events and so stuff like that where it's like i just love when universes like that can be connected to something of like oh yeah roadie's here because well this is a major event and you know the military has a presence here and so yeah roadie will be here as, to have this you know, I do it here for this event, that sort of thing. And I did love as well that I think like Rhodey, um, I feel like it was a little sort of set up for um, Armor Wars and it's mm-hmm. sort of, and what works uh, good for that, what works so well of that is, um, was it, it was something like the Rhodey's reaction when Sam was talking about Cap's legacy and talking about how he's sort of got to live up to that legacy and everything. And Rhodey like had this, this look that Rhodey had to say something. I think I thought it's like, oh, I think, Rhodey's hearing what Sam's saying about Cap and realizing he's got to do the same for Tony. There's no mm. more Iron yeah, Man now. That's what I it's, thought too. It's just it's it's all on Rhodey. He's got to live up to Tony's legacy. He's got to be the, the the guy the guy in the suit that's got to defend everyone. And I thought I like that because then him and Sam they're both Air Force pilots mm. and they've both been in exact they're both in the same circumstances of their friends and these well known heroes that that they were friends with have mm. died and they have to try and live up to that mantle. And I really like that because that had not occurred to me. But by having Rody there and having that conversation between them, it like all of a sudden just clicked in my head. Like that's a connection I didn't realize these two had. Mm, and it gives them sort of like a bonding point as well. Because even I was talking mm. sort of like in the intro of my video for the reaction, I was saying like we never got like unfortunately because of time and it's a movie, we mm. didn't get sort of like a moment with Rody and Sam, especially after Civil War and everything that yeah. went down. Um, and with the whole oh yeah accident. yeah oh god yeah, yeah that was so I was thinking was... like what's it going to be like i was just saying like off like i didn't know he was going to appear i was just like oh yeah like you know if roadie appears or if like something happens like that like i wonder what's going to happen and what the reaction is going to be yeah. like so it obviously Brody, seemed... yeah. I, I hadn't even thought about this but yeah um uh Rody's, um um his like exo legs are, like a little more refined a little more like like mm. able to be like you know worn under his like sort of yeah. uniform pants it's, got, like, it's a the more refined yeah. design it's probably they yeah. made that made maybe they made with some sort of nanotech that tony was working on oh, yeah, so more nanotech, refined, maybe, yeah more refined designs he doesn't have mm. to like wear the, the big heavy things but i hadn't even thought of that that yeah roadie's getting paralyzed and everything was i mean don't want to say you know sam's fault but it was you know vision was trying to shoot down sam and mm. he missed and hit roadie yeah oh yeah by no means it's sam's fault but yeah. at the same time i felt like yeah after everything that happened with sam and his partner like obviously during their time during the falcon program i was like oh will that have like an effect on sam and like you yeah. know like seeing another person fall from the sky like i'm like i can't yeah. imagine what that must be like so that's why i was wondering if that would have an effect obviously it hasn't and it seems like everything's okay between them obviously mm. but um yeah i just like i'm wondering like yeah. 
if there is going to be some sort of effect to it, I would have liked to have seen it, but it's yeah. fine. But mm. I, yeah, I, I really did like seeing Rhoda just because it's getting me hyped for, um, mm, for Armor Wars, Wars and seeing, yeah, that, that's the sort of stuff just going ahead that I just want to see more, more of that, you know, more of like, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, characters can just appear where it makes sense mm. for them to appear. Again, because again, like, sort of like you said, it's very much like a comic book if yeah. that happens. Like, especially, like, for example, the animated shows. Animated shows, we always see, like, oh, there's a character here and there's a character there, like, popping up, like, all the time. So I would love mm. that if that happens in these Marvel TV shows. That would be so yeah, cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, just seeing Rhodey there today, uh, well, last night, was was really cool. And I just, that sort of thing, I just want more of that going forward. It's like, okay, mm. this character is just is just here. It's, it's a moment of that that is similar to that in, in one of the movies that I liked where once again with Rhodey in Civil War where there's like this whole the chase for to try and track down Bucky and then there's the massive chase scene between uh, T'Challa, Sam, Bucky and Cap <laughs> and that whole fight that whole chase sequence goes down and then right at the end of it Rhodey just swoops in and is with the the, the military here to like yeah. all right stand down you know like and that sort of thing where, where War Machine just flies in you know <laughs> <laughs> because it, it would make sense for him to be here. Yeah. And that's why I want, that's why I'm bringing back to this again. I can't help myself. That's why I want Charlie Cox and Spider-Man 3 because it makes sense for him to be here <laughs> defending this defending this young vigilante wrongfully accused of a crime he didn't commit. It, that's the exact works. sort of person that Frank yeah. would, um, that, um, I'm getting my names confused now. The exact sort of person that Matt would want to come and defend, you know? Oh, definitely. But anyway, so in conclusion, Rhodey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think i know that those people saying um i think it was uh, uh malcolm spellman the writer for the show mm. and then i think uh, i think mackie said this as well like that uh, i said yeah this is um this is a show where like sort of there's going to be a lot of theories about surprise characters <laughs> turning up and i thought oh shit here we go again here we go again but, like <laughs> it's like i'm I am deliberately going to try and rein. I'm reining myself in from like sort of too many oh, yeah, things, like theories of like yeah, and also like this. <laughs> it's like, are it's like, inversely. I know that like this is the sort of show that like, because like, with one division, it's like as much as it's sort of like had the feel of like this is going to be this sort of show where all this crazy shit's going to happen. Mm. It is a very self-contained sort of story. Oh, it's yeah, just a story definitely. about these two characters, really just these two main characters in this one town, only a few little things going on. Falcon and Winter Soldier, on the other hand, is a story about like sort of this globe-trotting adventure. So yeah. like mm. it's like it's kind of like if it's a very it's, different feel. Yeah, and it's yeah. kind of like I guess a little more room for like characters to shop but i'm not i'm like uh, um i think i said it before on twitter the one the only character that's sort of like not really confirmed to be in the show that i'm really hoping to be in it and expecting to turn up is general ross at some mm. point yeah that's, what, and that's then, also one for me as well because like i want to i want to see the thunderbolt set up i'm i don't <laughs> doubt that it's happening we've got like a whole bunch of characters like there's like um there's the theory that uh Taskmaster is going to get, be recruited by Ross at the end of Black Widow. I want it to. We've got Zemo it. here as well. We've got you know um the Oblonsky's around and is going Blonsky. to be reintroduced yeah, I, in She Hulk. But how did um, we get here by the way? I don't know. We were talking about like <laughs> other side characters. I think Rhodey still. I think the Thunderbolts. Oh, the Thunderbolts. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I was talking about General Ross turning up in the show. I think. I'm expecting General Ro- General Ross to turn up. There's like people are going wild on all of the theories and like because because of Madripoor being there because oh, yeah. that's a place where Wolverine used to hang out. It's like that's where Wolverine's all the theories. Wolverine's not going to turn up in the okay. show. Yeah. It's not going to be Wolverine. <laughs> oh, dude, you know? no, yeah. not Wolverine. Yeah. If it's, it's, it's going to happen, and, people. And, and Wolverine, it, Wolverine in general is not going to happen. It's going to be Laura. Could yeah, be Laura. Like, that's yeah. It's Laura. It's not going to be Wolverine because Daphne Keen has been waiting what three, four, wait, no, like twenty-seven. Well, because yeah, like, uh, shot yeah, it in 2016. Yeah, three or yeah, four, three or four years to be Wolverine. Yeah, you know. So that's like, the one we're gonna get, people. So, and, and that's, that's the one I want. <laughs> and it's the one that, yeah, as I said, all I want one scene in the only Wolverine movie where we have a flashback scene, and it's just one scene of Hugh as Wolverine. There's no explanation if Hugh as Wolverine exists in this world or if she's from an altered time or whatever. There's just a scene of her Wolverine was Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Mm-hmm. One scene. That's it. Yeah. He, ne- he never. We've already up seen MCU. his Wolverine exist in like we've, we've seen already seen three different timeline versions years. of him. Yeah. 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 
We don't. No. Yeah, we do, we never see Hugh's Wolf, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine ever again in the MCU. We just have one scene in a flashback with Laura. Mm. She just a scene between her and Logan, and that's yeah. it. Dad, you mean? Yeah. It was just yeah. Her dad. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 would be perfect. You know. Yeah. We've got Batroc. We're gonna have Zemo. I reckon. Mm. And then we I got wouldn't... the bad Captain America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I reckon. Um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thunder. Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. I am uh, hoping to turn up. Yeah, I personally wouldn't be surprised me. if um, uh, Everett Ross turns up as well. Mm. Like he could, yeah. could turn up. He was like introduced in, as yeah. much as like it, I'm, I'm, it was recently confirmed by Martin Freeman that he's going to be reprising his role in Black Panther oh, too. Oh yeah, in Black Panther, yeah. But um, as much as he is a char- uh, more of a Black Panther character, it's like he was introduced in Civil War opposite and exactly. you know, like sort of opposite. heavily tied to Bucky. And, yeah. like, and, and also the fact that there. he was in charge of holding Zemo. So then, yeah, yeah. How did he how get did loose? Zemo get out? What happens? Yeah. Okay, I just so posted good. him. Uh, I just <laughs> posted him in yeah. the group chat. Oh, Let me see. 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 That's very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, but it's like um yeah speaking of bucky what i was not expecting last night like at all i was not expecting to see the winter soldier in this series same i you was know? so i was so happy though because i was yeah. just like the music from winter soldier is my favorite sound production in that movie was and winter soldier i've already said it it's mm. my favorite movie from the mcu so just having that theme song back and even just the winter soldier i was just like just the, like, the, yeah. the the tense like fingernails on chalkboard rising mm. string sound for that whole yeah. scene and, and it's almost it, like screaming like yeah. if you really think about it it yeah, sounds and, like it so i just love the music it's so good and then it played and then it played again when he's like when he was at the um the restaurants with yeah, um i didn't catch gentleman. his name i didn't catch his name uh, just going to the imdb page when, when they're <laughs> when they're at the at the restaurant together and he's talking about his son and everything, and Bucky's just sort of the long shot on Bucky's mm. just thinking about everything, and the Winter Soldier theme just sort of faded in in the background yeah. oh, as he's just like so remembering good. all of it. And and there's a great thing that someone pointed out on I won't try to find a tweet because it'll take too long. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, Xander, you probably retweeted it. It's probably won't take that long. Um, <laughs> what tweet? I'll, I'll find it just so I can give credit to the person that said it. And I'll put it. But where there's a whole scene in. Um, yeah, there's the whole scene in uh, Winter Soldier when Sam and Steve are talking about, um, you know, like living, you know, um, living I- in civilian life after the war and everything. Yeah. And talking about stuff like how was they said there's the 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 line about how oh the pillow said everything and the bed. about uh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you you can't get comfortable in bed because you mm. used to like sort of the the rough life you had as soldier and everything, mm. and then pointing out that yeah, Bucky when we see him he's sleeping on the floor. Yeah, my heart you know? broke. He's like, thing. he's like, yeah, he's just going for exact same stuff that, and that's the that's like I do actually really like the all the dialogue and everything that what he's talking about of um, uh, what do you call it when I, when I'm talking about everything about how uh, with the um the psychologist and the conversation is hanging up for everything it's like this is like he was with soldier and then everything happened there this is the first time in his whole life that he's not at war exactly mm. and he's in exactly the same position that cap is and with soldier and mm. sam is that you know he's back home from war and yeah trying to deal with that and so it's like yeah i i, I do i i really like that because it's the sort of thing that's like that so i think he needs to talk to sam because oh yeah definitely sam would know what he's going for you know mm. and i think even so i think and, it was the director yeah. who recently said it or the writer or someone someone said i can't remember who it was but entertainment that that yeah. twitter page like posted it and i was like oh shit that's true um they said that steve was the only one who probably could have been able to handle like everything post the blip because he's already been through it before yeah. so and I was like, mm, oh that's shit, true. that's so true. He would have been, it would have been so easy for him. But now everyone's going through that yeah. sort of like process, especially Bucky, I think more than anybody else. Um, so yeah. And also, can I just say, 
even just the mention or hearing Chris Evans' voice in this show yeah. already had me tearing up at the beginning because I was just yeah. like, <laughs> the captain. <laughs> I, f- I feel like yeah. we're going to get some answers about Steve. Um, we know... Oh, oh, oh. There was a thing yeah. I saw someone point out about the... um uh the um uh when you see the the exhibit at the smithsonian there's mm-hmm. one bit of like when it's like the sort of close-up picture of steve of all the text someone someone of course paused it and read all of that <laughs> and like it said that um what it said that after the after the the blip ended after thanos is defeated um steve rogers supposed seemingly retired and like so that's like oh, yeah. the, the official oh, yeah. word is that steve is that like the like modern day Steve like just retired after that? Which he did mm, technically. Yeah. Yeah, he did. It's just that so that that that's like yeah, it's like it's it's true. It's not it's not mm. it's not a lie. But mm. then and so then like that's sort of like feeding into the theories about like you know that it's like is he on the moon base or something? I, is he like yeah. where's he going? I love that. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I yeah definitely for an exchange that was sort of thing that I got it. Okay, he's not dead. So we don't know where he is, and we we might get an answer to that eventually. Yeah, but for now, I like an answer. Yeah, it's not been said where he is. Mm. You know, so we'll see. I I wouldn't be overly surprised if it's towards the end of the season if the cameo of Chris Evans that yeah. wouldn't surprise me that much, honestly. You know, <laughs> if he just if he had one, just one scene, <laughs> just that, one. That, tiny I wouldn't be surprised. Scene. You know. Yeah. Um, same as how honestly I wouldn't be surprised at all if in Armor Wars there was a flashback scene with Tony and Rhodey. And like yeah, just a I scene of Robert, 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 and Don just doing one scene together, you would not be hard pressed to think to convince Chris or Robert to come back for just a little scene like nah, that. In the series. Just for a small scene, yeah. I think they'll come back. And it's not a cop out sort of thing, especially like of like, oh, they're Saying, back from the dead. Yeah. It's just like no, it's just a flashback. No, it's a flashback. Yeah, yeah, and it works. And even with Chris, it works out because he's an old ass guy who's yeah. probably in a house chilling somewhere. Yeah. So like. For example, if like not Seb, I was about to say the real names again. Um, <laughs> Sam and Bucky end up, you know, like maybe there's sort of like it's sort of like that anti, like coming off the climax of like a big fight. Maybe something went wrong, and they need advice, and they go mm. to Steve. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that, and they just yeah. like they really needed another person to sort of give an opinion, and they just you know they had to ask. I would really like that. Yeah. Um, and as well, like I think. Um, uh, I, I do know that fairly recent, like, like you know, it was like for a while, like so. Robert was saying everything about sort of retiring for the role of Tony and saying like, oh yeah, he's like he's retired, like he's done that, mm. he enjoyed it, but that's sort of like that part of the chapter's done, that sort of thing. But then like, was it two months ago? Something like he said something like we asked about it again. So he said, well, you know, never seen never. Mm. So it's like, well, probably in the planning. They probably part have of, spoken to him yeah, about it, doing yeah, flashbacks. It, yeah. In the planning, planning for Armor Wars, they've asked, would you be interested in doing a. That's it. That's it. There'll be a scene in Armor Wars with John Favreau, Robert Downey Jr., and Don Cheadle. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. A scene. Oh, a scene dr- original a, trio. Yeah. A, a scene. A scene of them like just that. A scene of of Rhodey, Happy, and Tony all interacting. Okay, back to. <laughs> um, theories for next week and final thought. Final thoughts, I guess. I was gonna uh, quickly say for final thoughts yeah. as well. Um, I love the themes that have already been covered yeah. in the show already, especially like, cause I was shocked. I was like, we're probably not going to get into this episode, but like the trauma and mental health stuff that yeah. Bucky's gone through as well. Like I was like, Oh shit. They're going straight into it. Mm. I loved like that whole like scene of him, like, you know, talking about it and you know how it's sort of like reverse of what he did with Hydra. You know, he was crossing their list off and sort of getting the names off, but then mm. for himself, he's going off and like making sure all these people are caught and you know like Mm, brought mm. to justice and then like he's Mm. finding out all the victims as well he has the name of all his victims because he remembers it Mm. and it's just so that's it's oh yeah yeah. i'm sorry i just remember the line in civil war when when tony like tony says to him about his parents did you even do you even remember them and bucky says i remember all of them Mm, you know and yeah this just proves it he remembers all of them on on Mm. on this level um so yeah it's just like it's it's really nice to see that sort of being talked about and even like sort of like because you were talking about this Alex when we did the trailer reaction like sort of like sort of make the topic of like icons and symbols and how important that's going to be obviously in this show and even I I spoke about it in my reaction I said like it's going to be interesting what the new Captain America is like and what sort of persona he's going to be like up front but then like when the cameras and the crowds are gone what he's actually going to be like because 
like yeah. we all we all know this steve rogers was a really really good man and a kind man like through and through like that mm. was all him all that goodness came from him but then take that away and obviously the 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 shield is still there, but put somebody else there. What's it going to be like? So it's going to be interesting to see that unfold in the rest of the show. Um, also, one one more thing um, in terms of Sam. Um, that's also, it's interesting because obviously in the bank, um, a, this is a, a, sort of like a big topic that a lot of people have been talking about. Sort of like the racism that could be brought up in this show. So mm. I'm really excited to see what they're going to bring because the fact that, you know, they scripted that line in, that particular line from Sam's sister, I was like, oh yeah. my God, they went there. I was yeah. like, mm, yes. So I, I just yeah. like, I, I want to see more of that. And I hope we get to see more of that throughout the rest of the show. Yeah, that's something that thing has been sort of insinuated uh, leading up to her and everything. It seems like it's going to be like, just straight up, like, you know, Sam's very much the mindset of a sort of, and as much as they won't admit it, but it's true. It's like, yeah, they, they didn't ask him to be Cap because they don't want a black man in exactly. the symbol of America, you yeah. know? Um, also, want to talk about, um, yeah, I feel so sorry for, I mean, he's doing a great job. I know he's going to kill it, but I feel so sorry for, for White Russell and all he's done is smile and wink at the camera and everybody I hates know. him, you know? <laughs> it's like, and he's going to be a fantastic villain, but he's going to be the same oh, sort yeah. of villain as, is it uh, Adrian, Adrian Starr? from um, The Boys. Anthony it... Starr. I think it's Adrian oh, yeah. Starr, right? Anthony, Anthony Starr. Who's like, he's a fantastic actor. Yeah, mm. fantastic, fantastic actor. Great guy. It's like everyone hates his character. If they don't hate his character, they worship his character for the things that are actively horrible things he does. And he rises. Are you... I think I saw it too. Are you fucking insane? My character's a horrible person. Why would you look up to him? <laughs> you know, it's like just basically, you guys are idiots, you know? Like, <laughs> just like, do you not get how horrible person yeah. he is? And that sort of thing. It's like, it's always the, the the problem of um I, I saw it the other day. There's someone like um um it, it, it can really suck um when um um Seth Gilliam who plays um mm. uh one of the villains in Walking Dead and like gets death threats because he yes. plays such a good villain and they hate mm. the character and then it was reached to by Stephen Ford who played yeah. uh the main villain. That's kind of spoilers, but whatever it's an old series he played the main villain in season two of teen wolf and he mm. get said he got death threats for years because yeah. of that but again it's like he said it's like you know he said it's just you just kind of have to get you kind of get used to it eventually it's as much as it, it's it's just it sucks if people do that but yeah. you, it's just that's the way people act towards they can't separate the character, character from, the, from actor. the actor yeah unfortunately you know and it's like yeah it's like i, I hope yeah that's the thing it's just like yeah i just want to put that out there yeah but a lot of a lot of respect and a lot of love to, to White Russell because I know he's going to kill it in the role. I just feel sorry for him. He's going to get. He's Same. playing. He's going to play such a good villain that he's going to. He's going to get so much hate for it. You know. Same because I I, I went back and watched my reaction during editing, and I am such a bitch. Like I was like, ew, like no, and I was so mean. I was like, oh god, like, <laughs> like. But I was I just mean, like, that's it, not. It, uh, it was just like, yeah. oh, that's not Captain America. No, like. <laughs> yeah like he's gonna he be fabulous playing... whatever he does but i was like yeah he's nope. <laughs> i saw people pointing out how he's it's like um, white this... usually white usually has like sort of quite a full beard and they're pointing mm. out like so like just like just the look of his face like the the beard the beard looks good without the beard when he's clean shaven he looks just like just like too baby faced and like he sort of like too like baby. sort of like a... and oh, thank like God, yeah. i'm not the only one who thinks and that. they're pointing he's out like baby <laughs> face and they're saying, like, you see a like, great work from the hair and makeup team of, like, that's, like, for one thing as well, it's, like, he never usually looks like that in, like, mm. a lot of his roles. Usually he has the full beard mm. and usually has, like, shoulder-length hair as well. And so, so like, like he's sort of, so, for one thing, that'll help to, like, sort of any of, the, like, sort of, like, people harassing him for, like, you know, playing the villain and so on. That's something that, like, probably won't get much because he, do he doesn't yeah. usually look like, like this. Yeah. But then, like, you look at Walker and it's like, yeah, he looks like a bad guy. <laughs> it's like they've really done a number on him. Yeah. And, like, getting him to it's, look that way. It's, yeah. it's, like... it's, I, I, it's, it's the, it's the, um, as I said, it's, it's a really interesting thing of, like, um, uh, how do you describe it? Like, if you're playing a good, it's like, it, you, like, it sucks that some people go that far and sort of see just, just see the villain mm. and can't see the good and then you know the actor's not the same a same as this character but it's mm. always i think i think you're succeeding as a villain when it's like 
oh, I fucking hate this character. Yeah, like- it's like the actor. It's like the actor you're doing. It's like, and that's the sort of thing. It's like my mindset a lot of times be like the actor. I want to, I want to shake your hand. He's doing such a good job. I hate your character. Oh yeah. Uh, Nolan. I hate Nolan in the Arkham games. Penguin. Oh, same. I hate, I hate Penguin <laughs> so much. And that's like, he's just doing such a good job. Mm. That you, I hate Penguin. With, um, you know? <laughs> Who was I thinking about just then? Shit. Oh, Josh Brolin is Thanos. Oh yeah, yeah. Like at the he's... end of the end of Infinity, I was like, "F you, man! I hate you so much." But I want to like congratulate you with such yeah. an amazing performance because yeah. he was so good. So it's like, like when you when they do it so well, it's like if the audience is hating you, you're doing a good job. <sighs> okay, All so right. like Alex said before, we went off on the tangent. <laughs> theories for next week. Um. I think Madripoor will be episode three. Yeah, mm. probably. That's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I uh, I saw someone point out that in um, in Bucky's list of all the people he has to make amends to, one of them is Zemo. Oh. Oh yes. So... Right. Oh yeah, in the teaser trailer last year in Super Bowl. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. That's interesting. But right. um, Wait, yeah. it, is it to make amends with, or is he a, something he, um, a thing he like that is on his list of making amends? He has to deal with Zemo. Both. Could be, could be, I yeah, think that's both. True. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Like bring him to justice, and you know, but also like, sort of something. Yeah, sort of like yeah. face him mm. after everything that happened. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it's like as well. Like he 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 knows things. You know, he like sort of he'd done so much research into Bucky. It's like you know. Mm. It's like Bucky would want to talk to him. He'd want to like, okay, find out everything he knows and then let him write in, you know. Yeah. But yeah. um <clears throat> Yeah, uh I don't really have any sort of like major like sort of theories or expectations for like especially not for like mm. for like just for next week. Like more just like sort of going ahead through the show, just like some things I expect. Yeah, but yeah. That's sort of like just, what I feel too. Um. Yeah. Just in, in, in intrigued to see where the next chapter of it goes. The main thing I'm curious about is the scene we've seen the TV spots of, uh, Sam probably with Bucky's help training with the shield. Is mm. well, seemingly US agent has the shield now, so I'm not sure how he's going to get it back. Yeah. That's, that's going to be about. interesting. True. True. So good point. And it seemed mm. like he was training with a shield out the front of his fa- old family home, mm. where he is with his sister. So. I, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting the feeling that's probably going to be like the, uh, if this is a game, this is the the hub world mm. where they keep coming back to this, you know, yeah. keep coming back to his sister's place. This sort of yeah. place that they're hanging I feel out. like that maybe, oh, now I'm trying to think when they're going to take the shield because it's like, I feel like next episode is when Bucky and Sam sort of reunite and Sam mm. or even Bucky will find out that someone is yeah like has become captain america so yeah yeah, now i'm wondering when the shield might be taken at the very least it could just be set up that maybe it's like no the the shield that uh walker has is a replica they've tried to reverse engineer yeah it's not the it's not the one it's not the one smithsonian that's Mm. sam's you know the one that sam was given by cap because I, I thought, mm. I was praying that it was going to be a double episode premiere. And I was like, yeah. I was got ready. And I was like, oh, I hope it's going to be double. And then it was only one. And I was like, oh, damn it. But yeah, hey, either way, I'm excited for the next episode. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Um, and we'll see you all again next week for the next episode of Falcon Winter Soldier. Until then, hope you all have a good day. And that we're, that's where we're signing I, that's, we're signing off I guess I don't know how to do outros everybody say bye hey. bye everyone. bye <laughs> <laughs>